Hello everyone and happy Friday! Welcome back to Scarlet Hollow. When last we left off, we had been down to Reese's room and now we are going to have dinner with him and his mother, Dr. Kelly. You're having an excellent Friday and if you aren't, well, let's get through it together. I don't want anyone sharing their germs at the dinner table. Sure thing, Doc. No use saying anything here. It's probably best to just silently comply. You make your way towards the sink, but are stopped in your tracks by the pull of an odd door at the end of the hallway. Aww. You look so happy there. What? What are these noises? Oh, she's freeing some of his work. It feels out of place, like you've accidentally wandered into a different, older house. But more than that, you feel something radiating out from behind it, something dark and cold. Something that reminds you of the dusty tunnels you narrowly escaped last night. An oppressive hum just beyond your hearing fills the air and you feel strange. No, I hear it. Happy Valentine's Day. You are compelled to approach the door, drawn in as if hypnotized. Oh! Wow! Okay! Um... I guess we're opening the door? Before you know it, the doorknob is turning in your hand, your heart full of both deep dread and a compulsive need to know what might be on the other side. What do you think you're doing? Well... Uh, I'm looking for the bathroom? So you pass by the open door that's clearly a bathroom and went snooping around? Come on, get washed up. Everyone's waiting on you. You won't let her interrupt you. You need to know what's behind that door. Oh no, you don't. Come on, wash your hands and sit down. Dr. Kelly to the rescue. She grabs you by the shoulder, yanking you away. You do as she says, cleaning up under her watchful eyes and allowing yourself to be ushered back to the table and away from the door. Dinner is already laid out. Dinner rolls, spaghetti, and a light salad. Oh, now I'm hungry. Kanika anxiously picks at her food. Stella is nervously talkative, and Reese is suddenly quiet and tense, his shoulders tight as his mother perches on the chair next to his. Dr. Kelly eyes all of you with a sharp, fierce gaze. She sits opposite you at the far head of the table, her features silhouetted against the light of the setting sun in the window behind her. Grab a little screen knee. Got some Last Supper vibes going. Book smart. She's the town doctor. This dinner might be a good opportunity to question her about recent events. Pills. She slides a few tablets towards Reese. He obediently, he obediently swallows them. This is excellent, Dr. Kelly. Is the pasta sauce homemade? No. It's from a jar. I work too many hours to make my own pasta sauce. Hey, I know some easy, fast pasta sauces. Well, you have excellent taste in brands, and if you ever want any tips on easy home-cooked pasta sauces, you know I- No thanks, Stella. I have the internet if I need recipes. Um, thanks again for having us, Dr. Kelly. We really appreciate it. Okay, that's picking a fight. And I kind of want to, but... Does no one in this town have two parents? Wow. Ah, let's start with this. Reese is a talented artist. You must be very proud of him. He has a lot of skill honed through practice and dedication. I can't say I understand a lot of, of his pieces, but of course I'm proud. Thanks, Doc. It must break your heart having to isolate your son from the world like this. It's just another unfortunate side effect of his illness. Both of us have just had to come to terms with it. It's not the life I wanted for him, but it's the life he has to lead. Maybe he doesn't have to. Ow! Jeez, Kanika, your boots are heavy. 
Sorry, Dr. Kelly. We're totally respectful of Reese's boundaries, even though they might seem a little arbitrary and strict. Isn't that right, Stella? You get me all you like. It won't change my bold attitude and outgoing personality. You know, Doc, I feel pretty okay. I don't think having people over is all that rough on me. We'll see how you feel in an hour. Does no one in this town have two parents? Dr. Kelly's glare intensifies. Small towns are full of drama. People meet when they're young and reckless, and it doesn't always work out long term. Plus, these hills are dangerous, and the job's even more so. Things happen. Not everyone gets some fairy tale ending. You can find happy endings anywhere, though. It doesn't have to be perfect, but people can still be happy, even if bad things happen to them. I guess living in denial is a kind of happiness, sure. We've already said we don't know what he has. Uh... Let's see here. Have the police contacted you about Duke's body yet? Last I heard, they still hadn't found it. Body? I was under the impression he was just missing. No, Duke. He definitely died. I saw the footage. And I saw it for myself in person. So did Vinny. He's not missing. How the hell did that happen? Stella said it was the things in the woods. The ditchlings. They made a misfire. Ditchlings? Now, oh, I see. This is for one of your videos, huh? Reesh, you should know better than to lend any credence to Stella's little cryptozoology stories. I don't doubt that something happened to him, but I'm sure there were no little ghouls involved. I've seen them, Mom. Outside my windows at night. They're real. You don't have to talk to me like I'm a kid. I might be sick, but I'm still capable of reason, okay? Sure they aren't just raccoons, or... Stop. Stop doubting everything I say. Stop trying to rewrite things I tell you to fit what you think should be true. There's weird shit going down in Scarlet Hollow. Aside from Reese's mom staring down the table, nobody's making eye contact with anyone else. Have there been any strange illnesses spreading around town? What? No. Are you sure you haven't met any miners who had unusual symptoms? Anyone who seemed kind of... drippy? Or strangely ominous when they talked? Sorry to pry, just doing my due diligence. Absolutely not. I've barely so much as seen a runny nose, which is a good thing. If you're so concerned about the mine, why don't you just have Vinny ask Tabitha? I have no interest in violating HIPAA. Hell no, you do not! Hell no, you do not violate HIPAA! Mm-mm! <laughs> For your weird little investigation into nothing. Do you know Sam Wayne? Sam Wayne? Dr. Kelly takes a moment to think. No, doesn't ring a bell. Someone you know? Someone who's been following Vinny around. Super mysterious guy. We have reason to believe he might have caught some weird illness at the mines. He definitely looks like he could use medical help. So please let us know if he shows up or anything. If there's someone harassing you, you should get the police involved. This isn't any of my business. Thanks for putting this together, Dr. Kelly. I don't usually have to cook for so many people. I'm just glad there's enough for everyone. It reminded me of what it used to be like when these two would come over. Hungry teenagers eating me out of house and home. I should have charged your parents for all the food you kids went through. Honestly, it was like running I was running a restaurant, not a doctor's office. Oh, that's kind of a happy face. What were Stella and Kanika like as kids? Noisy and messy, like all kids. And they always had these little projects, videos, or crafts, or animal, animal rescues, whatever it was that had captured their imaginations that week. So like I said, noisy and messy. I don't think you're quite the hard ass you're pretending to be. Didn't we bring a dead squirrel into your house once? Oh god, not the squirrel. I remember that squirrel. Didn't you think the doc could Frankenstein it back to life or something? I was like 12. I was very susceptible to what I saw in media and very sad about that squirrel. That's one of those things that keeps me up at night. I still feel guilty about bringing that thing into your house, Dr. Kelly. I'm just glad you didn't make it a habit. I 
My cousin says she admires. Ugh, my cousin says she admires you. Really? I didn't think Tabitha could look up to anyone who isn't a Scarlet. You just didn't get to know her. She has tons of inspirations. Rockefeller, Carnegie, Ford. Okay, none of those are good. <laughs> Ugh, that's even worse. If she admires me so much, she shouldn't be afraid to come in for a yearly physical. Especially since her aunt and her mother both passed away at such relatively young ages. And I think the women in the previous generation fared even worse than that. I can't remember the last time I saw her in my office. She should get her priorities straight. You can tell her I said that. Maybe she'll listen to family. You're the medical examiner. Do you know how my aunt died? She suffocated. Tabitha... Tabitha, did you kill my aunt? Tabitha, did you kill my mom? Uh, your mom? Tabitha? She suffocated. Tabitha said she suffered from sleep apnea, and at your late aunt's age, it can be deadly. She should have come in more often. If she'd let me know she was having trouble sleeping, we could have worked on a solution, and who knows, maybe she'd still be here. No one in the holler thinks they need a doctor until they're six feet under, I swear. Um, we're not gonna say that one. We're not gonna say that one because we're trying to have a nice dinner. You remain silent, quietly picking at store-bought spaghetti and dinner rolls. So, we were talking about maybe watching a movie sometime this week while Vinny is still in town. We'll have to see how you're feeling. I can handle a movie, Doc. Yeah, we'll just sit downstairs in the dark. Reese is used to that. I'm sure he'll be okay. You're always overestimating how much you're able to do, Reese. This is why you keep getting sick. If I get sick, so what? It's not like that's ever going to change. I'm sick every day, and I'm not getting better. I don't want to spend the last few miserable years of my life holed up in the basement alone just because seeing my friends has been deemed too strenuous. I'm an adult, for God's sake. I can't believe I have to ask for permission from my mom just to have my friends up. Reese stops mid-sentence, wincing in pain and wrapping himself in his arms. I say things like that. I'm doing everything I can to try and fix... Silence as Dr. Kelly's eyes shoot open. Reese? Reese abruptly pulls himself from the table and leaves. Damn it, I knew it. I knew this would be too much. Everyone get out of my house, please. Just leave us alone. Stop trying to interfere with his life. All it does is hurt him more. We can't just leave him like this. Now is when he needs his friends the most. No, now is when he needs me the most. I'm his doctor and his mother. I cannot begin to explain to you the sheer amount of ethical violations happening there. Um, I know it's a small town. I know we don't have a lot of choices, but holy shit, you are not supposed to do that. I know you care about him. I know that. And he knows it too. But all any of you would do is get in the way. So just leave, please. Don't think I don't know something is up here. I don't care what you think. I just want you out so I can take care of my son. The three of you are rushed to the door. We'll be back, Reese. I hope you feel better soon. <laughs> Dr. Kelly shuts the door in your faces. The click of a lock signals the end of your dinner at Reese's. Have y'all heard of... Fictitious disorder? Can you get tenses at the mention of your words? No? It's where someone pretends to be sick or makes themselves sick on purpose or does it to someone else. Oh. She's doing this to him, I swear to God. She wouldn't. That's just so horrible. Who could do something like that to their own kid and for so long? Ma'am, you would be surprised what people put their kids through? No, no, there's no way. Y'all are barking up the wrong tree. It seems far-fetched, and it's definitely rare, but I don't think we can rule it out. We could probably go back and forth on this for a while. Let's grab Gretchen and get going. The sun is setting, we wouldn't want to miss a second of ghost action. Stella hurries off down the hill, almost as if to run away from what just happened. You and Kanika follow her down the slowly darkening street. Lit by the orange hues of the setting sun, the library feels different. 
What was once a quaint building in a small town now stands as an imposing structure, its walls holding something that stares back at you with menace. Maybe Stella is right. Maybe ghosts aren't real. Yeah, no, there's the whisper. <gasps> Look, there they are! Hello! Hello, ditchlings! Oh, there's another one! There's another one! Okay, I, I buy it that there are ditchlings. Anyway. Maybe ghosts aren't real, and the rest of tonight is going to be a pleasant break from the events of the past few days. Book smart. Your thoughts jump to the ghost books you've read over the years. So often, the ghosts and stories are metaphors for something else. Are real ghosts metaphors too? Just as its exterior was intimidating in the setting sun, the inside of the library is dark. Its shadows deep and foreboding. The meet and greet with the mayor ended quite some time ago, and the throngs of visitors took whatever joy was in this place with them as they left. There's Pixel! Hi, Pixel! Hey, Oscar! Are you back yet? Shh, you can't yell in a library. It's against the rules. It's after hours. Rules only apply before 5 p.m. Now it's our domain. Hey, you're just in time. Rosalina is situated in the back room. Alexis is going to keep her company while we hopefully get this all sorted out. I'd love for her to be able to sleep in her own bed tonight. What's she doing? She's not quite as chipper as she was when she was on stronger meds, but she's still doing surprisingly well. Alexis has been by her side nonstop. She's been a really good friend. Rosalina and I are both lucky to have her right now. I'm glad she's back home at least, and we'll be able to get her back into her real home in no time. I've come fully loaded, got my EMF reader, temperature gauge, spirit box, infrared camera, UV light, video camera, salt, flashlights for everybody in case the ghost messes with the electricity, parabolic microphone, sharpies and paper for automatic writing, matches and candles for rituals, and you've got your specter sniffing compatriot- oh, and you've got your specter sniffing compatriot at your side too. This nose can sniff out any narrow do well we might find, whether spirit or scoundrel. Oh, and a Ouija board. I know they're toys, but you never know what might come in handy. Wow, this is a lot of ghost hunting stuff for something that was so last minute. You just have this stuff ready to go in a bug out bag or something? Of course I do. I actually stashed a couple of bags here overnight after I got back from the mines. Excuse me? I wasn't about to carry everything around all day. This way we can go in light and pop out to grab more stuff once things start getting spooky. I may never have found any compelling evidence of ghosts, but that's not for lack of trying. And after last night, I'm more than ready to try again. Hey, it's Avery! Hey, I hope I'm not too late. Have I missed any creepy paranormal stuff? Avery! I'm glad you could make it. The more pairs of hands we have, the more equipment we can carry. Sure thing. Always happy to offer a hand or two. Glad we'll be with someone up. Glad there will be someone with a level head in there tonight. Whoa, is that an EMF reader? I've never seen one in person. Look at all this stuff. Spirit box, parabolic microphone. You all really covered your, all your bases. Maybe I spoke too soon. You know me, Kanika. I'm as level-headed as they come. I'm just not ready to rule out weird paranormal, paranormal stuff. When people tell me they saw a ghost, who am I to say they didn't? I mean, y'all apparently saw some really unexplainable stuff on Monday, and that mine only collapsing again after a hundred years while y'all were there? I'm just saying, anything seems possible right now. Um... Those mines were chock full of ghosts last night. After all my fruitless ghost hunts, I basically convinced myself that ghosts weren't real, but last night we saw some really convincing evidence. Especially those figures you mentioned. Though I'm still 50-50 on whether they were cryptids or ghosts. Hopefully whatever happens tonight will clear that up. I can't wait to wander, around, wander through Oscar's house for a few uneventful hours before getting Rosalina tucked into bed. I could use a nice quiet night after everything we went through. Kanika, I'm so sorry. I don't think that's what's happening. 
That'd be too bad. I was kind of hoping to see a ghost. Maybe it'll be a happy medium between no ghost and deadly spirits of vengeance. A Casper situation might be nice. I envy your pessimism here, but I suppose it won't be long until we get to the bottom of things. Yo, don't rush off without ghost- Don't rush off ghost busting without Zane! No way I was gonna forget your promise, Stella. Zane, glad you could make it! I was confronted with my own mortality for the first time yesterday, so I'm desperate for answers about the afterlife to ease my troubled mind. Now let's go mess with some ghosts. My oh my, this certainly is a lot of humans for one little ghost hunt. I do hope this means my dear Stella will be safe this evening, and that whatever foul creatures lurk in the shadows choose to prey on someone else. I hope my house is big enough for six ghost hunters at once. If this is everyone, we can go ahead and... That's everyone. Wait, what about Tabby? What about her? She's not here. Let's get started. I guess she can catch up with us when she gets here. Well, if y'all are itching to get started, it's through the back. Follow me. Hey, human. Kick ghost ass, okay? I miss my special tree. Sure thing, Pixel. You and your companions grab some equipment from one of Stella's carefully stashed bug out bags, bags before heading towards the junction connecting Oscar's house and the library. Looks like the sun is almost set. This is when stuff usually starts to kick off. I haven't been back inside for about a week, so I have no idea what to expect. Hey! You're not doing this without me. If there's a ghost, I want to see it with my own eyes. You tell him. Sorry, Mr. Gutierrez. I tried to stop her, but she was really convincing. Oh, hi Zane, what's up? Yo. Rosalina. You decide it's best to let Oscar handle this. I've done enough resting. It's not like hobbling around in the library is any different than hobbling around our house. I miss being there. I miss feeling home. Let the pup come. It's best to give her the chance to face her obstacles head on. Take it from an old soul like me. You shouldn't be hobbling around at all. Just take it easy until you're more healed. I've got to learn how to walk around eventually. Might as well start while I'm still on pain meds. And our house is one story. It's not like I'm climbing Mount Everest. Oscar sighs. The doctors did say I should encourage you to practice walking. Okay, you can come along, but if you get tired or it starts to hurt, you let me know right away. Thanks, Dad. Now let's get our house back. And I think that is where we are going to end for today. I hope you have a pleasant weekend, and I will see you again on Monday for more of Secret World.